Many experiments have confirmed the presence of a voltage difference between a raised radio antenna and the Earth's ground potential. This voltage typically ranges from about 0.3 to just over 1 volt. While mainstream electrical theory may brush this off as insignificant, it's actually a direct result of interactions between dielectric and magnetic fields within the layers of the ether, what Tesla rightly called the ambient medium. This naturally induced voltage can be stored in a capacitor or fed into an LC tank circuit. The resulting current is admittedly small and the overall power seems low by modern standards. But when the circuit is properly designed and aligned with natural field dynamics, especially resonance, that small voltage can rise to several volts, enough to drive a speaker and convert radio signals into sound. In fact, many engineers working outside the academic mainstream have built circuits that require no 12-volt battery or any external DC power source. Yet somehow, sound still comes out of the speaker, powered only by space itself, by the Earth's electric field, and by the longitudinal impulses broadcast from radio stations. The key to making this work is a proper Earth ground, forming the opposite pole in what Eric Dollard would call a dielectric magnetic dipolar gateway. So this isn't just about powering a circuit, it's about opening a pathway, dielectric plane, into the vast field of free space. That leads to a serious question. Can this kind of setup be scaled into a reliable power source for the home? The answer is yes. Real-world results and countless community experiments shared on free energy forums have shown that it's possible. There's solid documentation and even public demonstrations of circuits running on similar principles. At its core, this system looks a lot like the radiant energy devices Tesla was working on in the early 1900s, especially his 1901 patent on capturing cosmic radiation. But unlike Tesla's approach, which focused on charging capacitors from radiant discharges, the design here puts more emphasis on RF-style signal amplification that rides on space's harmonic field layers. In this circuit, the first amplification stage produces somewhere between 4 and 10 volts depending on tuning and ambient conditions. A second amplification stage follows, boosting both voltage and current even further. The output is around 40 watts of continuous power, not from conventional EM force, but from the constructive interactive interference of dielectric and magnetic fields working together inside the core. That energy can be used immediately, stored in polarized capacitors, or, more effectively, used to charge a battery bank. With full-wave bridge rectification, that energy becomes suitable for conversion to AC through an inverter, enabling complete energy independence from the grid. While capacitor banks work as short-term storage, batteries are more reliable for long-term energy needs. A key feature of the circuit is a feedback loop. Capacitor C3 allows high-frequency signals after amplification to feed into the secondary coil L2 in phase, reinforcing the signal through resonant back coupling. This isn't ordinary feedback. It's a scalar amplification loop operating within the ether, adjusting impedance below the electron level. Another feedback path sends only the negative phase of the signal through resistor R1 and diodes D3 and D5 back into the primary coil L1. Now, because the transistor output at the collector is inverted by 180 degrees, the positive signal once again reinforcing the signal at L2 and maintaining the oscillation. This is where conventional science falls short and where ether theory, as explored by Russell, Steinmetz, Tesla, and brought forward by Wheeler and Dollard, provides real insight. The energy here comes from field perturbations, that is, distortions in the ether, which show up as standing waves in the coils L1 and L2 and in the cylindrical ferrite core. Unlike closed-core iron transformers, this ferrite setup is open, the structure allows a type of field geometry that you can't describe with Maxwell's equations or retarded potentials. Only through the framework of etheric field theory, involving the interplay of dielectric and magnetic radial geometries, can you make sense of what's really going on. It's this resonant and sympathetic interaction within the core that boosts voltage and current dramatically, leading to far greater power output. That's why the quality of the ferrite material is crucial. You want high permeability, minimal eddy current losses, and a geometry that supports radial, not toroidal, field flow. 
In the end, this isn't just an interesting circuit, it's proof of concept. It shows that space itself, if properly accessed through the right field geometries and resonant relationships, can become a living power source. This isn't over unity. This isn't mystical free and functional understanding of the ether and how to engineer with it. Mm -hmm.